I was about six weeks into my freshman year at college and I was on the volleyball team and I was having a great time. One night, a stranger, a man, broke into my on-campus apartment and he raped me at knife point multiple times throughout the night until ultimately I was able to get the knife from him and defend myself. Luckily, the police officers were at the front door. They caught him at the front door, and that's pretty much what started all of this. My name is Ava Stokes, and I found out about the violence response team because my mother is a social worker, and she used to work with some of the people at Bon Secours. And she knew Bonnie Price. I remember a friend who had been very supportive of our program and knows the work that we do contacted me and, and I said, you know, this family's in crisis. Her daughter was a freshman in college and had been brutally raped the night before. And absolutely, I wanted to do whatever I could. Once I learned about Ava's situation, I reached out to the nurse in the state that was caring for her and we discussed the services that they were able to provide. I don't think that they were handling some of the post-care treatments, some of the forensic analysis, the collection of evidence, things like that. I think the police felt that they had a very solid case, but who was dealing with Ava and the medical things that she was going through? I had a very bad couple of months at first. So when I first came home, my mom immediately brought me to Bonnie and we talked about medication and how important it is to go to therapy and make sure that I'm staying on the medication. Ava came to us about a week after her assault. She had received forensic care out of state. Because Ava's sexual assault happened out of state, Virginia does not cover the HIV medications due to the assault happening out of state. I was able to work with Ava and we were able to work with drug manufacturers to fill out forms and to be able to get her medications covered. Those medications are thousands of dollars that patients have to pay out of pocket. And so we were able to work and develop a process actually that we use to this day to get HIV meds covered when an assault happened out of state. When I was talking to Bonnie, she really helped me understand that there's nothing wrong with taking medication. There's nothing wrong with needing it if you're depressed or anxious or suffering from PTSD. She really helped me understand that, you know, I needed it and it wasn't something that I had to be ashamed of. Over the past 31 years, the way we care for patients who've been impacted by violence has changed a great deal. We have learned a lot about, from the forensic perspective, evidence collection techniques. We've learned how to provide counseling and how important it is to have counselors here, not only when the patient comes to see us, but also once they leave, because we don't want anyone to fall through the cracks. And so as a result, some of the things that we've changed over the years or added to our program include our victim advocacy services. I do the work that I do because I want to be a voice of comfort to the patients that we come in contact with. So many people hear forensics and understandably, they don't know what to expect. So I wanna be that voice of comfort to let them know what to expect, what we can help them with in regards to resources. And as an advocate, I want to let them know I'm just here for whatever they need, from a snack to a hand to hold. One of the most important things about the violence response team is that anybody can go to any regular doctor and they can get the treatment that they need, but it's very unique to have a program that provides a safe space. They give these victims back their choice because ultimately their choice was taken away from them. It's really great that on the violence response team we have nurses and advocates. While the nurses can take care of the medical needs of the patients, us as advocates are able to be there in the moment to look at the emotional needs of the patient and then following up with them afterwards. So making sure they have connection to therapy or they need help with law enforcement or other help within the court system. It's a really great wraparound approach that looks at the whole person and that's how we heal them and lead them to success. To do the job that they do and provide the services that this team provides 
is not without a huge amount of financial expense as well. Oftentimes, insurance doesn't begin to cover it. So the way that you fill that gap is through donations, through the events that the foundation puts on, the fundraising efforts that we all do. When I first did this, I remember there being preemies. It's easy to get behind a little tiny baby. It's a lot harder to get behind somebody that maybe is a victim of sexual assault. To try to put a nice bow on, you know, we need to do a rape kit and those things are super, super expensive and insurance is only going to cover a portion of it. So it's so, so important because with having that forensic data, having the evidence that they're able to collect, I mean, the conviction rate is so much higher. And I think that from a mental perspective of these patients, being able to see some of these good outcomes after the fact, it's just going to allow more people to feel safe and telling their story and sharing their experiences where maybe they wouldn't if they didn't have this kind of program. I want to take this opportunity to thank the staff that works for the violence response team. The work that they do, it's a calling and they make a huge impact in people's lives and they don't always realize it. And so I just want them to hear from me how grateful I am for the work that they do. And I have such great respect for this team. I'm also really grateful for the community members who support us, for the donors. The space at St. Mary's as well as the space at Southside were completely funded, 100% funded by community donations. And that means a great deal to me. The community supports the work we do. The community supports those patients who've been impacted by violence and without it, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't have the things that we have. Bon Secours has been a huge supporter of our work, but we can't do it alone. And without the community, these things, these services, they wouldn't exist. I want to thank the donors who continuously donate to this program and allowing the, this program to be available for victims just like me. Most importantly, I want to thank Bonnie Price for being so supportive when I truly needed it and being available to talk to me and talk me through different medications, resources, counseling, therapy, all of the things that I needed because without that, I would not be where I am today.